right, this is an interview at the New York State Military Museum, Saratoga Springs, New York, the 10th of January, 2006, approximately 10 a.m. Interviewers are Wayne Clark and Mike Russert. Could you give me your full name, your date of birth, and place of birth, please? My name is Daniel J. Lawler. I was born in Glens Falls Hospital on, on uh, August the 23rd, 1925. Okay. What was your educational background prior to entering service? I quit high school to go into service, and uh, um, I enlisted in November the 8th of 43 into the Marine Corps. Okay. Do you remember where you were and uh, how you heard about Pearl Harbor? Yes. I was 16 years old. I was in the Paramount Theater, which is tore down now in Glens Falls. Uh, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, the uh, manager came down and uh, he uh, turned the lights on and he said they just bombed Pearl Harbor. We didn't know where Pearl Harbor was, but anyway, uh, the, the, we all lived, the whole thing emptied out. And I ran home to ask my mother and father if they had it on radio. There was no television at that time. Mm -hmm. And so that's... And what was your reaction in reaction to your friends, do you recall? Uh, uh, excuse me. What was your reaction to this event? Oh, oh um, it was something that... Uh, I mean, I know you were only 16, but... Well, of course, don't forget that up until then we haven't even been in war. Mm -hmm. It started the whole thing the next day. Roosevelt started the next day. And so um, uh, it was kind of different. Uh, we sat up all night listening to the radio, and uh, it was something that... Uh, it was a complete surprise. It's the first time that we, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we got into this since World War One. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, now you uh, enlisted in the Marine Corps. Yes, I did. Through, through the Army, because I... Now, would you explain that? Why, why did that happen? Well, I was in a hospital. They dropped a can of powder on my left eye. I ended up cross-sided. I couldn't play sports. I went to St. Mary's Academy. I couldn't play sports because of this. Uh, train of thought. So you said that uh, you went into the draft boards and, oh, oh, yeah, okay. and so, so and they wouldn't accept you. So I, I, I went down at uh, to, to, uh, 17 years old, I went down to join the, the, the Marine Corps mm -hmm. and I was cross-sided and uh, they said they couldn't use me. So I went uh, went to, to the uh, Navy and they said they couldn't use me. I went to the Army and they, they said when I become 18 I'd be 4F, which I did, which I was 4F. I had the eye operation on the eye, I straightened it out, and then I went into the, I enlisted into the Marine Corps. Now, why did you decide to go into the Marine Corps? My brother was in the Marine Corps the day after Pearl Harbor. He went into the Marine Corps, and uh, he ended up with a bad heart, and he died when I was on Okinawa. That's why I went to win because he was in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, where did you go for your basic training? Oh, to Paris Island, South Carolina. Uh, and uh, it was rough down there. But, uh, they, they, that's when you came from a boy to a man. They really uh, put you through the mill, but everything they did there, we used in combat. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. Did you receive any specialized training? Yes. Uh, after that, we went to North Carolina, uh, and uh, uh, re I received a machine gun. I went to machine gun school. And uh, when did you specialize on any particular machine gun? Yeah, the 30 caliber, the 30 mm -hmm. caliber machine gun, the light and heavy. Now, the light we used in the daytime. That way you laid behind that one, laid down. But the heavy one you had to sit down, so we only used it at night. Now, the light machine gun, uh, you can only put three bursts out at a time. One, two, three, left. that's all. The other one was water-cooled, so you could run as much as you wanted. Mm -hmm. And the 30 was air-cooled? Both of them were air-cooled. No, the, the, the one was air-cooled and the other one was water-cooled. Okay. All right. Did they take any <coughs> uh, sort of crew, like two or three guys, to... To move the water cooled around? Uh, no, no. Uh, the, the gunner and assistant gunner. We never used it. We never used them. We never used them together. Mm -hmm. The only time we used that was at night. So what we would do, we we'd go back into the CP command post, and uh, there was a there was like runners on it. We could two men could pick the mach old machine gun okay. up. That machine gun weighed 98 pounds. The other one weighed 30, 63 pounds. So that was a pretty heavy gun. It was a heavy pounds. gun with the water. The, uh, the water, there was a five, five gallon water uh, tank went with it. And the, the jacket around the, the gun uh, was about, uh, I think it was a two gallon tank. Mm -hmm. and of course, that one they could, they could uh, 
just keep firing that all comes in. But the other one only put two or three rounds at a time. Okay. Sometimes we see these movies, they got I got a kick out of it because you'll see they'll lay on them and they can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> did that water cool gun, did that have the, the cloth belt? These are all cloth belts. They were both cloth belts. Oh, okay. They were, uh, they were uh, uh, I guess we'll, you'd call them cloths, yeah. Which did you prefer? Did you have a preference? Well, uh, we did more damage, of course, with the with the, the with the, the the small one because that was the one where you when we moved out. That's where we moved out in. Mm -hmm. The only time we used the, the other was when they attacked us at night, mm -hmm. you see, because you see we sat up behind that. You, you don't want to sit up the front line behind right. nothing. <laughs> so uh, we used the other one. Uh, were there any problems with either of them mechanically? Or? No, they were a very good gun. You could drop in the water. You could do anything you wanted. They, they were a very very good gun. And I say they were 1918 guns. They were from World War One. Uh, that shows you how prepared we were for World War II, mm. and we used these all the way through. Okay. Um, how long was your, between your basic training and your specialized training, practically how long was that? Uh, the basic training was 13 weeks, and the, the other training was about two or three months. Mm -hmm. All right, after uh, you finished your machine gun training, where, where did you go from there? We went to uh, to uh, to uh, New River, North Carolina, Camp Lejeune. Mm -hmm. What what did and, you do there? Well, that was a machine gun, and then from there we went to uh, 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 San Diego. Now, when were you finally formed up into a unit? Okay, uh, the four of us were together. We went across. Oh, who, who four of you? You didn't mention that. Oh, the, okay. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Butterfield lost his eyes in Okinawa, and uh, Harold Chapman Gansford got killed. Uh, uh, John Murray Hudson Falls got his kneecap blown off, and I got hit in the back. I broke uh, four fingers, I broke my arm, and uh, I received a, a, a little bit in the forehead, and I got hit some more in the back. Was that shrapnel wounds? They're shrapnel wounds. They're from now, all four of you went in together. Four of us left together. And I'm the only one that came back. Mm -hmm. we, all, we all got hit, but I was the only mm -hmm. one, of course, one got killed. Okay. Uh, now, when you went up to San Diego, is that where you f were formed into a unit, or well, no, no, we before then, no, we we went. There were there were replacement battalions they called us then. Oh, okay. And then we went into uh, we went into uh, New Caledonia. And then from New Caledonia, they, they we were shipped to uh, uh, Pavuvu Island, which was a stationary for the First Marine Division, which just came back from New Britain. They fought in China. They fought in uh, Guadalcanal and uh, New Britain. And then uh, we joined them. Now all four of you were assigned there together, then? Yeah, but two different outfits. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, they were, uh, we were, two of us were assigned to the 5th Regiment, and the other two were assigned to the 1st Regiment. Okay. Um, how were you received as replacements? Did the well, they, they, <laughs> they, uh, we were, we were, we were boots, more or less, and uh, they, they were good. They were good guys, you know. We, of course. We, you always pick on the guys coming in. We did too when they came in, but we are we got a lot good. We still travel. Okay. Um, did you get any specialized training while you were there, like the, some of the veterans and so on? Did they? Uh, it, we, we always look forward to anybody that was in combat. You look forward to them because you figured that they came through it. Maybe you could just come through it. Uh, so that's when we uh, uh, we always look forward to the old guys. We, mm -hmm. They told us to do something. We did it because they've been through it. So how long were you there before you went on, went into the invasion of Peleliu? We were there about uh, three or four months. Mm -hmm. Then I went. Then I was. I went. Into, uh, I went into. A, I got an LST, a landing short tank. And I was a, a, I was a, assigned to a tractor, and I was in the first assault wave on uh, Okinawa, Peleliu, and uh, there was bad going in there. Uh, Yelling and screaming and hollering, and uh, we uh, we uh, we moved out. We paid de dearly for moving out. And uh, when we got to the airstrip, there was a tank there, a Japanese tank. And I remember I got up and looked in there, and what I saw, we, we went up, I wouldn't talk about that. You couldn't even put it on paper. It was real bad. And uh, so uh, then the next day, uh, about noon time, we started across the airfield. And they were the machine guns firing and the, the rifles and everything was real bad. We were receiving a lot of fire. 
and of course we'd run and drop and go a little farther and drop and uh, I, uh, I was running and I, uh, uh, all of a sudden I just I just went, I just went forward onto the to the uh, to the airfield and uh, when I woke up I pulled my hand back and it was all bloody and uh, Corman came along and he uh, did my hand up and uh, he did my up here show a little bit and then I started to get up he says you've been hit in the back too so he uh, of course they gave me morphine right off the bat and uh, so uh, they uh, tagged me and I went back to the hospital ship and went back to uh, Guadalcanal and uh, and waited until the first Marine Division came back to Puvuvu again. Then I rejoined them. Now, how long were you in the hospitals? Well, I stayed there a long time because we had to wait till Okinawa, the Pelu was over, and then get back there. So I was in there about two or three months, maybe more. But I, I was, uh, my wounds were, were better before that. Was that a mortar that uh, wounded you? No, it was a, no, it was a, uh, uh, I, I believe it was a, an artillery piece because I could hear, I could hear, just before I could, I could hear them the going over. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it was because it, uh, it, I, I kind of heard, I said, gee, that's kind of close, and that's all I remember, just going forward. So it hit behind me. Mm -hmm. okay. um, all right, uh, what was your care like in the hospitals? You... Well, they were very good. The nurses, very good. Uh, they, uh, uh, we, uh, they received us very good. Of course, uh, in the Marine Corps, uh, we were attached to the Navy, we part of the Navy. So uh, all the hospitals were Navy, mm -hmm. were the Navy. Was your unit pretty well cut up on? Yes, uh, they were all bad. I, I, the, the numbers are in there, but I can't mm -hmm. think of them right now. There was quite a few. I think there was, I think there was five thousand wounded, and two thousand got killed in Peleliu. Out of twenty thousand men, we killed ten thousand. We figured that on, on Peleliu, that if we if we uh, uh, buried all of us, the, the, the Americans and the Japanese, there wouldn't be enough room for them. That's how many there was. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Navy looked, took a tick lick in there too. That was one. Of, that was bad, really bad. Okay, after uh, you were released from the hospital, rejoined your unit. What happened then? Uh, well, then we trained there, and then we got ready for Okinawa. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we went into Okinawa. I, again, I was in the first assault wave, but in Okinawa, uh, it was different. Uh, we. Uh, we hit the middle part of the island, and we had no, it was, they weren't there. So we, we all landed right in, everything went in, it was perfect. And they, we, the Marines swung north, and the Army swung south. Uh, we, there was nothing in the north, so we waited, and then the Army ran into them going south. And so the, they wanted our, they wanted our uh, tanks. We said, no, we'll go as a unit. So we went down and relieved the Army, and then we had... We went into Shuri Castle. Uh, the Sixth Division tried to go into Naha. Naha was a pretty, pretty big city, and uh, we could see it from Shuri Castle, and um, it was well fortified. The Japs were all in that city pretty bad, so uh, they pulled up about I think right, roughly I think it was about three battle wagons. And they started bombing that. When they got done, they leveled the whole city. They walked right across it. And that's the only way to fight a war. And so, so now you said there was a civilian population there. What, how did they relate to the Japanese? Well, they were Japanese. They seemed, yeah, right. That, the, that's their main land. That was yeah. the main. But what they would do, the, the Japanese, uh, what we'll call the mainlanders, they took all the, they take the, 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 the chickens and they take any, anything that they wouldn't pay for nothing. Now what we did, we bought everything. You know, if we took anything from them, we paid them. And uh, they, we got along good with them, but they did not like the Japanese. They were Japanese, but they did not like them at all. For that reason, mm -hmm. and it was the fact there was so many on there. I think at one time we figured there was over a million men on the island. That island was about that island was uh, 60 miles long and about three or four miles wide. Okinawa. How long were you in Okinawa? I fought. I fought at Okinawa 98 days, and uh, I um, we were on there about uh, two months after that. And from there, we went into Peking, China. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, in Okinawa, were you uh, there for any of the banzai attacks against your unit at all? Oh, yeah, so, yeah they, they used to pull banzai attacks at night and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, they, 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 uh, they loved, the, they loved uh, the knife fighting. And uh, we, could, we could hold our own, but 
why do that when you when you got a an M1 rifle? So we so when they pulled Banzai attack, we just piled them up because there was no reason for. Uh, no, um, just thinking about it. As a machine gunner, did you carry another weapon with you? No. Uh, yes. Oh yeah. Oh, a carbine. I carried yeah. a carbine. Okay. Uh, when you became a sh machine gunner, you carried a pistol. Mm -hmm. A gunner assisted gunner carried a pistol, and the three ammunition carriers carried up uh, a carbine. Um, are there any other remembrances you have from being on Okinawa that you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, a little humor maybe. Uh, after it was over with, we set up a, a, a washing place and the, the, the Okinawa girls used to do our washer clothes for us. And every time I walked by there, they would holler, Kichi guy, and laugh. I'm like, what the heck is that? So I got a hold of the, of the, the interpreter. And he laughed. He says, "It's your curly hair." He says, "They never, they don't have curly men don't have curly hair." And it wasn't curly; it was wavy, but they called it curly hair. So I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> uh, now, did you leave before or after the uh, the typhoon that struck? Uh, uh, no, we read that we ruled that out. No, the typhoon struck. Mm -hmm. Okay, go back a little bit. Okay. While I was on Okinawa, they bombed. They they, they dropped the atomic bomb. Uh, this wasn't written up too much. It started, it started a tidal wave, and uh, when it hit Okinawa, we were rocking pretty good. The whole island rocked. I mean, I was we were sitting. I was sitting in the. I was writing a letter home, in the evening. Well, it was in the afternoon, and uh, uh, I felt woozy. I thought maybe it was my malaria coming back, and uh, I looked up, and the lanterns going back and forth. This whole island's rocking. Rumors had it that when it got to Australia, the, the 10, 15, 15 foot waves came right up on the. Thing. They, they didn't write too much about that, though. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you feel when you heard about the dropping the atomic bombs? Uh, uh, very good. Uh, we were we were scheduled to go into uh, to the, the mainland of Japan on December the 25th. That was the rule. Right? That's what we were going to do. But they dropped the atomic bomb. They dropped the second one. It was over with. When World War when uh, the war was over in Europe, we were on the lines. And uh, they, they came and they said, well, the war is over in Europe. We felt pretty good, but that wasn't helping us too much <laughs> until after the whole thing was over. Now, did you ever witness any of the, the kamikaze attacks on the ships? All the time, all the time, yep. Yeah. Uh, they, were, they, were, they were real bad. They, they took an awful licking, and the, 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 uh, the, the Navy took an awful licking there. And uh, the, uh, uh, the, oh, oh, by the way, when we hit the, when I hit Okinawa, we went up onto the airfield, and there was a kamikaze plane there that hadn't been taken off. I couldn't get into it. We had a little Italian guy, he was a really short guy, he, he got into it, he was rolled up into it. So how they ever got into these, I don't know. Mm. Uh, they, uh, when, the, when they took off with those, the, the wheels stayed down, the wheels stayed on the ground. There was no wheels. They, had a, they, had a, they were all done. If they, did, if they didn't hit a ship, they were gone anyway because there was no way they could land without the wheels. The wheels stayed on them. Oh, took, really? Yes. We looked at that. There, there was, there was, we, we figured out how they were. Well, we had a couple of cans. They, 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 they left pretty good. We figured out they were, they were very small, but the whole front of that thing was all solid uh, uh, shells, and they, they, they hit more. They did a job. Mm -hmm. they uh, when we were going on our way up uh, 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 in the task force, we were in the middle of it, of course, and they brought, the, uh, they brought uh, a battle wagon down. And, uh, uh, not a battle, I mean, an uh, aircraft carrier. That thing was lisping right on the side, the whole side it was taken right off with, a, with one of the cosmic housing planes. Now, uh, your friend from Glens Falls that went in with you, Jim Butterfield, he lost his vision at Okinawa. Were you aware of that at the time? Mm, Even no. though I know he was in a different unit. No, they were in two different units. And after uh -huh. it was over with, <clears throat> after it was over with, I went to uh, uh, to uh, see how they were. And so I walked into where Butterfield, you know, where his, where his place was. And uh, nobody said a word, and I says, I just looked around, and somebody said, he got killed. I said, oh, I mean, he got his, both eyes blown out. I said, oh, God. So then I went to Chapman's. I walked in there, and they said, he got killed. So it was pretty pretty rough to, mm -hmm. so, to receive it that way, but that's the way it was. Mm -hmm. Okay, after you left Okinawa, where did you go? Oh, okay, after, okay while I was in Okinawa, the, uh, the war was over, and uh, uh, I had enough points to, I had, 90, had to have 110, 100, had to have 98, I had 110 points, so I was on my hopes of coming home. 
So they put the list up. It wasn't on there, and none of us were on there. And so what happened is that the guys that came over to relieve us had they they had families and children. Of course, and they they had more points than we did. So they just put them on a went back. So we had to go to Peking, China after that, and we had them killed. We had people killed in there with the communists. Uh, we uh, got, we went into uh, Tanku. That's where we went. And from here, the first regiment went into Tencent. The fifth regiment went into Peking, which was the capital, and it was a pretty big, pretty big place there. Mm -hmm. And the communists would bother us pretty good, but um, when we got on to um, we got on Peking, um, the airstrip, we lined up the the, uh, uh, the planes, uh, corsairs. They lined them all up in a straight line one time. They they started to attack as we could hear them coming, so they they lined them up, and it was at night, and uh, so the pilots got into the to them, and they started them up, and we picked the tails up. There was 50 caliber. There was three. There were six 50 calibers, three in each wing, and we just traversed it. We picked them up because to, to bring them down on the ground. Mm -hmm. We picked them up. We just kept traversing. And they kept them going. We 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 killed about, about 1,500 or more. Of them. They piled them up out there, and uh, they never bothered us after that. They didn't want no part of us. <laughs> they took care of that. Of course, I came home a short time after that. Mm -hmm. So how long did you spend in China, approximately? Uh, I spent about, uh, uh, let's see, I went in there in 40, uh, let's see, I went in there uh, about five, six months, something like that. Okay. I come out, I come out January, I come out. I was discharged February 14th, I come out in January. Mm -hmm. How were you accepted by the, the Chinese people? Well, very good, oh yeah, because of course they were, they were, running, they were running a civil war, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, we went in to get rid of the Japs too. That was another thing we went in. Them. So they had a <coughs> the Japanese that was over with. They had to salute us, mm -hmm. all of them. That was part of the, 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 the their deal. And of course, we went in to, to get them all the hell out of there. So uh, we went in, and uh, this naval officer was coming down the street, and uh, he walked by me, and I hollered, "You, you speak English?" "Yes." Yeah. "I said, get back here." "I said you didn't salute me." So he pulled up his sloop. So I didn't answer him. So he's got this nice saber on his side. So I reached for the saber and he jumped. I says, I haven't answered your salute. You've got to stay in there until I do. So I took the saber and I took it off. And I ran out to uh, the Catholic University there. It was about four or five miles outside the city. So I took that out and I gave it to one of them guys. The next day, the officer came into our barracks and he said, of course, us, lawyer, us Marines could lie pretty good. And he said, uh, he's the one who took my saber. I said, I don't know what he's talking about. They, they couldn't find it. The captain said, you got us? Yes, I have. So uh, I, I carried that home. And on the clearance slip, he said, if somebody's got more senior than I have, the captain, he said, they can take it. So he had the lieutenant colonel sign it for me. So and sure enough, when I got aboard ship, I had it wrapped up, but they couldn't see it, but I was carrying it. And the aboard ship, uh, the captain wanted to see what it was. I showed it to him. Well, he said, that's going to look over, oh, good over my mantle. I said, you better read the clearance slip, sir. I said, you got more authority than that? And no, I said, so he couldn't touch it. So hmm. I, got, I got that home, that's how I got it home. When were you discharged? Uh, I was discharged in February the 14th, 1946. Okay. Did you uh, ever make use of the GI Bill? Yes, I, I finished high school. I went back and finished high school. I was very proud of it. I was 30, I was 23 years old. How did you feel being in there with all the young kids? Uh, it was all right. We we got on go with them. Of course, they all they thought we were God, I guess, <laughs> because you see, World War Two. Getting back to a little bit about this war business, in World War Two, uh, the Americans felt it. Uh, gasoline was rationed. We got uh, three three gallons a week. Uh, 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 tires were rationed. Uh, cigarettes was rationed. Meat was rationed. Uh, Eggs were rationed. Everything was rationed. So the American people felt a little bit. That's why when we came home, we were treated like gods because they knew what war was. But in Korea and Vietnam, I was here and I didn't know there was a war on. And I don't think anybody else did either. And that's why I think the guys, when they came back, were treated the way they were. And this is the answer I give them the guys. I, think, I believe this is true. You see, since, since World War II, nobody's, uh, you, talk to, you, know, you talk to people now, you were rationed, you couldn't get this? No, you couldn't get it. Rations. Okay, um, 
Do you ever make any other use of the GI Bill? Uh, the, the yes, I use it for my ta taxes on my house. <laughs> and, uh, 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 I, uh, I, uh, when I came, I came down and I went into the what's name. I could probably got a, 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 a pension, but I wouldn't do it. I mean, these, these things don't bother me. Thank God they don't. To this day, I'm 80 years old. It's never bothered me, and I did not receive a pension. I didn't want one. I still don't want one. Uh, there was too many guys that didn't deserve it that got it, but uh, so I didn't. Get, I didn't put in for a pension at all. But I could have. But they weren't bothering me, so why should I? Mm -hmm. Did you uh, ever make use of uh, the fifty-two twenty club? Yes, I, I, I did. The, the, the high school. I went oh, back to okay. year, we can, year, year and a half, and they went back for a year and a half in high school. And I got that. Oh, yeah. Or the, or the fifty-two. Oh. That was that unemployment. Uh, oh, oh yeah, I, I had some fun with that one. Yes, uh, I did use that, uh, and uh, so uh, 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 I filled out the application, and it said, "What did you learn in the Marine Corps?" And I said, "Kill jabs." <laughs> and he said, "Well, you." you uh, and so uh, he didn't do anything, and uh, so when he was interviewing, he tore it up. I said, "I wouldn't tear it up." I said, "That's the government paper you're tearing up." I said, I'm going to make another one out, and you better not tear it up. Well, he says, we ain't got any Japs for you to kill. Is that your problem? I'm ready, willing, and able. <laughs> so I got all of it. Jimmy Butterfield came home. So uh, I said, come on, Jimmy, we'll go up and get you on the points. I can do that. Yes, you can. So uh, he came in, and so uh, he, asked, he asked Jimmy about the same. You know, and he said, well, he says, yeah, he says, um, I, I said, he paints. Oh, I got walking. I says, uh, I'm with Jimmy to help him out. And they said, well, Jimmy, you know, you're, you're blind. He says, yeah, well, he said, uh, uh, hey, but he says, he's ready, willing, and able to work. What's he do? He says, he paints houses. He what? He says, he paints houses. Show him how, Jim. Well, he says, I, I, uh, I take the paintbrush and go along, put my finger there, and I go along. He says, we, won't, we can't find a job to do that. I said, well, then pay him. So he got his 52, too. <laughs> so, do you join any veterans organizations? Yes, I belonged. To the, I belonged. I was a charter member of the, of the Marine Corps League. I'm a. I'm a uh, I belonged to the. Uh, I was a uh, commandant of that. I belonged to the VFW, the American Legion. I belonged to both those. Uh, active in all, both of them. How do you think your time in the service uh, changed or had an effect on your life? Well, as I said before. Unless you're over there, thank God for what we got here. And uh, uh, if you see what I see, you would you would argue about nothing. And I think it did a good that part of it did good for me. You know. Okay, you have some things to, that you brought yes. to show us. Okay. okay. Now, how do you want to do this? Okay, just uh, you know, pull out each. Item one at a time. Okay, well, you, these here about these. Okay, all right. yeah, you talk about them. Okay, these these are these are Japanese flags. They weren't folded like this, but they were folded at an angle. There was a uh, there, there's a little string here. It was tied around their necks. They all wore these around their necks. The Japanese soldiers did. Now, where did you get those? I took them off of them. Uh, where? Okinawa or? Oh, oh the, all this is Okinawa. Okay. Because okay. okay. Palomar was only there one day. Yes, right. I, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, yeah, okay. this is all Okinawa. This is another one. I said, this, this poor guy, they made this one. As you can see, they sewed the circle into it. This is kind of silky, so. Okay. No, they actually had those tied around their necks. They, they, they had it folded. We could, you know, they could fold it. They, they didn't fold it. They had them folded around, and they had these tied around their necks. Hmm. They all wore them. Yeah. Oh, that one. Those are those blood stains on I, that I was, one. You I said? was going to bring up. Yeah, these. I just, just want to see if Okay. These are blood stains. I couldn't get them off, and uh, that's this. Uh, okay. And, uh, let's see here. Well, that's that's my uniform here. I have it out in the car. I can bring it in later. Uh, let's see what else I got here. If you hold them up for okay. a okay. little okay. longer so okay. that yeah, Wayne can okay. focus on them. This was, the, this was, is that right there? Yep, that's this, fine. This was the, uh, the, uh, on display at the American Theater, uh, the, the American Legion in Hudson Falls. They had them when they, uh, when they, they did the upstairs over and they, they called up the, uh, the uh, uh, Pearl Harbor Rule. 
Okay. So this is on a display there. I have these. Now this is a, a larger... No, this is a larger picture of my hat. Than the picture. Now, what is the sword on the top? Okay. This here okay. is an Army Samurai Saber. I took this off of a, 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 a Japanese officer uh, in, in the lines. Okay. And, uh, they, use, they actually use these in combat. This is a tw 25 caliber rifle. The serial number is 4 on it. And it's been stamped in, by I was told, by experts. Uh, it's worth quite a bit of money. If, but uh, because they only made four of them, if they used it, which they did later, because they went from a 30 caliber to a 25 caliber, and uh, so the rest of them were were, were machined in. But these, this was four because there's only about four of these made. This is the, the this is the, the, the bayonet was on the end of it. This is a Japanese naval officer saber that I picked up in Peking, China. There wasn't too much left of their navy, so that's worth quite a bit too. Okay. Uh, This is what it looked like when I first got out. <laughs> so that's in 1945, that's 1946? That's, that's 43. 43. 43. I mean, oh, okay. when I printed it, 43. Oh, okay. I, I'm sorry. That's not a very good one. I don't want that to be. I think so. Okay. Now, how do you want to run this here? Um, you want me to flip it around? Well, yeah, maybe, maybe do like the highlights of... Okay. Yeah. Okay. We, we've already got the story on this. Yes. Okay. Yes. These are just uh, these are um, postcards to send from Paris Island. Just funny postcards. This is this is when I was down on Paris Island. This was on Okinawa. This is in Paris Island, these two are Paris Island. This was in Life Magazine, a story on Palau, written by Thomas Lee, uh, 1944. Uh, this is another picture, and uh, this, this guy here was shell-shocked. Now, what was the story behind that? You told okay, us. Okay, okay. This this is a Christmas card given to me, given to us, on Pavuvu Island in 1944. A Christmas card, and uh, it was given by the general. And uh, this is the menu onto it. I'll give you. I think I got next one. Then. Okay. These are Japanese soldiers. Uh, I took them off of them. Uh, they. Uh, you notice one thing about these. Uh, they're never smiling. I haven't got any of these are smiling, just very, very strict. This is the only Marine I got. He had a uh, anchor on his hat. That's how you distinguish him. The now these were taken off dead Japanese, Japanese soldiers. That's right. Okay. And this is about the same. This was this this was this is Okinawan uh, kids training. See, school. Uh, you took that off the wall of the I school. I took this off said? the wall of the school. A kid must have did this by crayons, but I did it because of the, the flag he put on, mm -hmm. the Japanese flag in the bottom. These are civilians. These are Okinawan civilians. They were Japanese 100% because that was part of their mainland. But they didn't, the, 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 the people from the mainland, the soldiers didn't treat them very properly. And so they didn't like them, them very much. They, they didn't like them at all. Now, how did you get those photographs? Uh, I found them. I found them in houses and oh, things okay. like that as we were going, going along. This is a this is a girl school. I don't know. This is this is a, a Japanese uh, Okinawa map, a military map. I turned it in and I put my name on it. That's why I got it back. And these were gun installations, so they could use them. I took them off in a, one of their uh, headquarters. This is the same thing. Uh, Ernie Pyle was killed right down Now, here. what was the story you had about this Ernie Pyle? Okay, at Ernie Pyle, uh, was, we were going from the north to the south, and uh, uh, there was an old man standing or sitting on a, a, a wall, and he was writing on a, with a, a pad. And I said to him, 
uh, are you writing a book, old man? He said, yes. He says, what's your name? I said, Dean Lawley. He said, where are you from? I said, Glens Falls, New York. He said, put you in a book. So somebody asked me who it was. He said, oh, some old guy. I don't know who it was. So uh, he, uh, that night, the sergeant said to me, uh, uh, do you know who that guy was? I said, no, Ernie Pryor. Of course, he was a war correspondent. Mm -hmm. He always wanted to be in the Marine Corps. But two days after that, he got killed on this island right here. In fact, we took that island, too, a little island off of Okinawa. This is a... Uh, these are some of the souvenirs I've got. Now those are the two flags you yep, showed the two us. flags that are for, yep, these are the mm -hmm. two flags. There's a right, this rifle and bayonet, I got all this stuff. Now tell us, how, how did you get all this back, back to the States? Okay, uh, I, uh, we, got good, we got along pretty good with the, with the Seabees. So uh, I went over to the room, I said, can you build me a box? We put all these rifles and stuff in. He said, yes, a wooden box, so he did. So I took it over to the post office. You can't ship that at home, you've got to have clearance slips and everything else. So I said, well, there's a clearance slip, and I'll put them right in there with them. I says, I guess we can do it. So I shipped them all by freight, by, 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 by parcel post. <laughs> That's how I get most of the stuff home. So you, you sent home two rifles? Uh, I had two rifles. A couple of swords? I had two rifles. I had one saber in there. Mm -hmm. I had the two flags were in there. Um, three or four bayonets were in there. And uh, just about everything but that one saber I carried home mm -hmm. from the Navy. I imagine the post office must have been cursing you, the man, the man that had to carry that to your house. Right? Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> they were pretty heavy. Uh, this is a picture of China, China, myself. This is the, this is the, uh, the, the cemetery on uh, Okinawa. Uh, when we came, when we got, when Butterfield and the forest made a piece that if any of us got killed, we'd go to the parents. Well, uh, uh, John Murray didn't want to do it. So Butterfield and myself, we went to see the uh, Chappie's mother and father. And uh, they, uh, they, wanted to, they wanted to bring him home. And I said, no, because they were a pretty rough ship. So I said, no. So I talked to them and leave there. But then they, they moved him from here. They were going to move the whole thing to, uh, to uh, uh, Pearl Harbor. So they brought him home. So they did bring him home. Yeah. We buried him over here. He's buried over here in South Carolina's Wells. Mm -hmm. These are these are gods. Um, this was in here, and this was in here. Now, to us, this is a metal, but to them, this is God. There was a difference, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you know, there was no, there right. was no heaven, no hell. This was, this was it. This is another religion. This is another religion. They, they could, this they carried. This was, they were all in their pockets. That's right. These were in the pockets. These are just, uh, these are uh, Japanese uh, postcards. See, they're written in Japan. Again, you got these off uh, dead Japanese, Japanese soldiers. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Here's some more Japanese. These are some more. There's some more of it. Uh, Kyoto. Uh, that's where this guy. There must have been a pretty big city because. Uh, mm -hmm. Did most of the soldiers in your or Marines in your unit uh, collect souvenirs? Yeah, we did. We did. Some of them collected more. Some of them collected things that I wouldn't collect. They, they, the teeth and stuff like that. I didn't mm -hmm. do that, but some of them did. Yes. This must have been a pretty big city. They had a, a, a underground railroad. This is. Uh, these are Japanese girls. Now, this is Japanese war bond. Uh, I've been going to uh, to three or four. Um, meetings, and uh, nobody's ever seen one. And uh, that's what it is, a Japanese war bond. Now, did, did you uh, pick that up in Japan or no, in no, Okinawa? No, uh, uh, Okinawa. Okay. This is all Okinawa. This is, okay. uh, this is money now. This is Japanese money, but it was written in English, so we think that these people must have been on, on uh, 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 the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. This is Japanese money. This is China money. This is a thousand dollars. One time it was equal to twenty-five cents. Maybe the next day it's fifty cents. Change a five-dollar bill and you couldn't put it in your pocket. <laughs> I sent a guy back with this, and uh, they keep changing their money so much, and, and they wouldn't take it over because they thought it was counterfeit. <laughs> this is China money. This is China money, but this this is a Mex uh, this is a. Uh, This is our money. They paid us in this money. 
because they didn't want our money floating around, but they wouldn't take it. So they, they took it back from us, but, but I kept one of them. So, but that was our money, but they wouldn't accept this in China. That's what they called the uh, military payments. That's right. That's right. MPCs. Yeah, but the, we didn't, uh, but they had to pick them all back because they, they wouldn't take it because they, 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 even a lot of their own, their own was counterfeit. Hmm. No, because this is, this is a story in itself. This is a Betty Palmer. This is where the Americans first met the Japanese as an island just off in Okinawa, and I was on the island. This is a Japanese Betty Palmer coming in with the stripes, that, with the marks on it. They had to mark these in in order to come in, see, now they, we had never met them before. This right here is where they first met, right here. I was set up with a machine gun under here, and my captain says, if one of these guys will wipe them out, because they, we figured they were bombed, they were, you know, mm -hmm. so that's why they did that. So, but they weren't. So from here, they got on to this plane. This is, I see him sign the peace treaty, when he committed Harry Kerr when he got back, and here he is uh, getting onto our plane right here. Oh, these, these now this is in China? The, this is on Okinawa, Okinawa. Island, island, island off Okinawa. Oh, they're surrendering then. They're surrendering. Okay. This, this is the first place, they, it was the first place we ran onto them. This is the first, we met them. The first mm -hmm. time Americans okay. ever met them. And they never published this anywhere. I found it in a, I found it in a, a tape, and I've got it home and, uh, about this. But I've, I've only heard it once or twice since then. Just, I don't know why they kept it quiet, but they, hmm. never, they never published too much of it. So it's kind of different. Here's your, here's your clearance slip, some of them. Oh, when I, when I got into, uh, when I got into New York City uh, with this Japanese uh, saber, um, Two MPs grabbed me at the uh, at the train station. They went me into this room, and there was a there was a the chief of the New York chief of police was there, about five or six officers. The state was there. The state was there with uh, major down the line, and um, they opened it up. And he says, "You can't have this." He said, "That's you can't have a, a, a weapon over so many length." I said, "I got a clearance slip." What do you mean? And I showed him one of these clearance slips. They called. They said, "No, you can't touch it." It was a good thing because <laughs> they would have taken it. This was welcoming us when we got to China. It's just a story. This is China pictures. Uh, I meant some of these trucks and everything. That's a Japanese truck to just carrying them. This, this so you used some of the Japanese equipment. There. Yeah, yeah, but there, uh, uh, China, China. Yeah. Now, did you ever hear of Japanese soldiers being rearmed to help? Against the communists? Oh yeah, oh, oh, well yeah, they they took off to the, to, well, what happened is, we first went in there, that night, uh, two Marines got killed. <coughs> so, we took off. And we took care of quite a few of them, and the rest of them took off to the hills. But they were fighting the Chinese communists all the time in the hills, because they were leaving us alone, so, mm -hmm. so they were, they, they were, they were, so, of course, they didn't go home because they stayed over there. This is the front lines. That's me. See how <laughs> I dressed up in the Chinese uh, gear. Just, just be funny. These, no, oh, this is a, this is a Catholic University in Peking, China. Uh, that I ran. They were about eight or nine miles outside the Forbidden City. This fellow here, uh, his father and mother in the China, was in the communist territory, so he was having to leave the school. So I went to the school and I put it through high school, through college, his last college, everything, his uh, food, the whole thing. I think it cost me six dollars, our money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this is what, these are just pictures of myself. Now where were those taken? These are home, these are taken, oh. these are nothing, mm -hmm. this, this is home, this is home. Oh, uh, Dante Orsini, so oh, yes. Okay, yeah. this is Dante right here. Uh, he was with my regiment, and we were coming home together. Dante. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is this is the Forbidden City in Peking, China. That's where the emperor lived with his with his uh, back in the olden days. With his um, uh, okay, back in the olden days, way before we got there, I got we got there. Uh, a man could have as many wives and girlfriends as he wants. Mm -hmm. 
And so, and they were now allowed to walk with them. A woman in China at them time was worth nothing. Uh, the, the wise work, the wise walked behind them, and the, the girlfriends walked on the left, and he's walked on the right. And they could have, but what happened is, he couldn't afford them. That's what happened. This whole deal why China's got so many people in here. But this is what started the whole thing. Now, were you able to purchase these? Uh, uh, yes, or? yes. I, I bought these. Yeah, these are postcards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, I did see the big wall. I got to the big wall. It was quite a, quite a thing too, the China Wall. Uh, this is just a. This is for the Catholic University. Just a, 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 a program I went to. Oh, okay, here we go. What's it? Tuvaka was what? I can't read it. But anyway, the whole thing came to 300. Tuvaka, one orange, 375 dollars. Their money, <laughs> not ours. Um, this is some of the, what they taught. This is a marching song with the 5th Regiment. It was a very good marching song. And uh, uh, the guy just died here not, not too many years ago. We used to march like that. These are my dog tags. When you die, what they usually do, the government keeps one, they send one home. Mm -hmm. but they kept them this is my pass in China. This is a write-up of the paper in China when I came home. You know what that is? You ruptured your duck. Yeah, you know what it's about? You probably do. See, they, what happened is, when we got discharged, there were so many going and so many coming that we put this on a uniform so that they would uh, know that we were discharged and we didn't have to ask us for papers, and that's where that came about. So. This is the first Marine Division um, pants that we wear. This is another story, Paul Douglas. Well, this is my d discharge. Here's my two. Here's my draft card paper. The were draft cards. <coughs> when I was up on uh, Okinawa, the captain sent me up an old guy. He said, "Send you up an old guy. Take it easy on him." So this guy came up. He's 50, 60 years, 50 some years old, and. Uh, Geez, old man, you're old enough to be my father. Don't get nervous, you big guys. Don't be getting nervous, sonny. So he stayed with us. And so um, uh, he, would, he would get his mail. We used to get his mail and put SWAK and all this stuff from his wife. And she would, you know, kids, you kids. So uh, uh, one night, so he was writing one time. He was writing a letter. And he said to me, he said, uh, Danny says, what do you want to tell the president? I says, President who? President Roosevelt. He's alive at the time. As you tell him over here, we don't got we have this and this and that. And he's writing it all down. And he asked Fazino what he thought. Well, they don't know how to make spaghetti. And he went on and on. <laughs> and so uh, he asked somebody else. So he, he folded the thing thing up and put it in the envelope and walked away. What's the matter with him? He's getting even us because we were kidding him about the wife and all this stuff. And he made fun at him. A guy come up a little while after, and he's, uh, a couple of days after that, or a week after that, and he's where's Douglas? I said, the old man right there. So he handed him a letter. So he opened the letter up, and he says, Dan. He said, the president said he's sorry about this, that, and the other. And he's answered, says, come on, old man. I said, you ain't got no letter from the president. He said, I haven't. He says, no. Laid it right down there. He said, president of the United States. And holy, he did. And he says, you guys are pretty stupid. I said, what's the matter? He says, I'm 58 years old. What am I doing in the Marine Corps? Says, That's right. How could he be in the Marine Corps at 57 years old? He's, he said, I'm Senator Paul Douglas of Illinois, and I wrote Roosevelt's speeches. I could have gone right to the floor because he's Lieutenant Colonel. <laughs> of course, you're up there <laughs> damning the, the uh, officers and everything. And uh, so uh, my wife and I went to, went down there to see him. We went down. We were going to wait. When he got married, I was going to Florida, and we stopped down. And uh, this is his card that he gave me. He signed it for we could get in to see him. And uh, we went over to see him. He took us out. He took us all over. We, we, we did everything down there. This is my uncle back in 19, 1920. This was the paper when we came came in the 1st Division and 6th Division. When we came back to the States. That was the paper from the 1st from the, the and 6th Division. This is a write-up in the paper, I believe, yeah. This is a write-up that was in my father's, Sandy Hill and Brass. He worked for them, and this is a write-up. Uh, I wrote. I went over to Chapman one time, and I sat down. I'm not very good at writing, but I stretched, etched this out, and it was a poem. And my mother was pretty good, so she more or less did a lot of work on it. So some of that in there isn't where it should be, but this is what happened. And I said, I never do another one. 
and uh, my wife Annette said, "No, I'll never write the same letter." I said, "My first and last poem," but that was uh, it was dedicated to him. And I and I wrote it at his grave, and I took pictures of the grave and sent them, brought them home to his mother and father too. Uh, when we when we, when we brought all when the, the government sent all these guys home, you know, that got killed over there, we we st we stood on our guard for the Marine Corps League, and the government issued us this for for doing it. That was in China. This is the this is the uniform right now. They got they still got this uniform out there in the car. These are just uh, this is the uh, this is the people that were this is the VF this is the um, MIA. Uh, that was the amount of the people that were missing after World War Two. If you receive the if you receive the Purple Heart, the state of New York also issues you another medal, and this is the medal. I got it from Como. And he signed Como. Okay. Uh, right after the war was right after the war was over, uh, uh, we uh, uh, they started a New York State Guard. So I was a young kid, so I joined it. And uh, this is my discharge from the State Guard, which is. K Company, they, they, brought K, they took K Company, next day they took K Company right out of here. The next day they were gone. So we started a state guard, so I got a discharge from the state guard. And this is a discharge at 8, 17 years old, and, and uh, this is just like a regular, so this is, there's not too many of these. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get a different one. You probably, the dates are in there somewhere. This is locally. Um, Jimmy Butterfield signed that. He's blind, but he signed his name mm -hmm. to it. Uh, these are just these are citations I got. Okay, this is this is my Purple Heart. Um, I, when I was in when I was in um, uh, Pavuvu, in between, there was only 36 of us that were wounded that came back. So they presented they presented. So there's only 36 of these that were given by the first division. It was, was Penalized by the general, the first Marine division. So there's only, there's only uh, so many of them left. This is my discharge. This is the back of it. You can see up here. Uh, you can just tell you where it was, what I did, and the whole thing. That's not. That's a copy of it. I, I got the, the, the real one home. Oh boy, we got, let's slip over here a minute. When I got into China, I, I went into a, a, a to a, a camera shop, and I see these pictures. These are horse marines. They did away with the horse marines in 1932, and uh, I said to him, "Did you have these during the war?" Yeah, I had them in the cellar. I said, "What are the Japs? These are they cut me? You said they limb to live if they knew it. <laughs> they had these, but these are the marines back in them days." Um, so what I did, I sent a couple of these pictures to. This is all volunteer now. These are the only horse marines left, and this is in the, these are in the parade, uh, uh, the Rose Bowl parade every year. But these are all volunteers, and so they sent me the letters, and sent me this to have to put in the book for for, for uh, sending these pictures here. About that. This I went to Paris Island. This is the the the, the pass to get through the gates. This is some of the horse marines you just talked about. This is Pouvou Island. Just a it was a, a little island, you know that. Mm -hmm. Staging area. Uh, this is another just a citation. I guess 50 years I've been doing. I did. I did had the grave registration. I did all the flags on all of the, the Marines here. I still could almost go to them, and I did it for 45 years. And so it got too much. I couldn't do it anymore. This is okay. This is a. There's a three of us here. Of course, the, the other guy was dead. And he's got, Jimmy's got a picture, and we put it in here. See, but this is the three of us that were. Here. He died, of course. This is uh, this is Jimmy Butterfield, myself. This is uh, um, John Murray. This is uh, Okinawa. They went back to Peleliu. This woman, girl, did, and she wrote a book and she put my name in some of the book. But she sent these back. This is just the way she found it. This is the only place over there they said that they never, they never touched. This is a Japanese tank. This is a Japanese uh, 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 artillery piece. Uh, 
This is the beach. Here's the, here's the tanks. They're still there. Everything is just left there 60 years, years ago. This is the, of course, we put this up. These are some of the people there. Would you ever want to go back and visit there? I never, I never, I was afraid. I didn't want to go back to meet the Japanese people. I just, mm -hmm. I'm just a little bit leery of that yet. I've gotten used to it, but it's, it's, it's still there. Mm -hmm. um, this, this story on Douglas. Now this here is a, okay, I guess you saw that. That's a picture mm -hmm. of this here. Now, this is my wife and Senator Paul Douglas. That's the only proof I got that this story is here. But we're on our way to the My brother belonged to the. My brother was the first one in Glens Falls to ever belong to the, to the, uh, to the Marine Corps League. And there it is back in him. That was in 1942, and I don't went until 43. This, this here was in the. Um, these here, uh, they were. Uh, <coughs> I was Grand Marshal in Glens Falls Parade. Two years ago, and last year I was in, and I was in Grand, Grand Marshal in the Hudson Falls Parade, and this was in the um, the Chronicle. It's more or less the write-up that we got there. This is just another write-up like that one. Okay. That's the, that's the. Would you want that? That's the word. That's the that the, the marching song. Oh yes. Okay. Go sure. ahead. Okay. Now you also told us you had a, uh, you met uh, Sledge that wrote the book. And Eugene Sledge. Yes. Okay, Eugene Sledge. Um, uh, he was he was in mortars. And I was a machine gun, so he was right. He was right across. He lived right across the street from me. Uh, I remember we teased him. Uh, of course, he was from uh, 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 Alabama, and he, you know, he was always we, we called him rebel. We'd get madder and heck at us. We called him a rebel because he called us the Yankees, and uh, so anyway. Uh, he was just a regular guy. So when he came back, he went finished school, and he, he, was a, he ended up as a, a, a teacher at the, one of the universities in, uh, down in Alabama. So when I get into this stuff, I, uh, uh, I, I read the book and I see the picture. So I called him, and I said, "Do you remember, I said, do you remember me?" He says, "No." And he said, "What was your name?" And I said, Lala. He says, Lala. I said, you're the rebel. I said, I remember you now just because we were teased. So I knew him real well. I've got letters from him. Uh, and uh, he, uh, uh, and there, of course, they made a god of him with the, at the school. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they were very good about that. That was the story about him. Let's see, this is okay. 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 Want one of these? Oh, well, that's a copy of the map. map. That you map. Have. Okay, now, this is something. This is a oh. copy of the Horse Marines. Mm -hmm. See, which which is 19, let's see, okay, I got here. This is 1945, but this was, this was taken before 1932. How long before? So uh, this is pretty good history, and I'll give you this one too. Oh, okay. Thank so you. I can get that before. I can get these done again. Now, this I think these are things I gave you. This is the. Yes, yeah, you gave me that. Did I give you one of these? I don't think so. No. Okay. Here, this. Okay, this is the. the this is. This is school. That's myself, uh, Gary West, uh, Gary West, and uh, Bob Addison. They were they were on Guadalcanal Raider Battalion. Uh, Art Laporte, he was on Iwo Jima, and uh, that's me. And I was on. What's in this is Jimmy Butterfield. This is this is what we were at the school. And we've interviewed several of the gentlemen there. Probably did, yeah. Probably him. Uh, the hell's his name? Can't yeah, take down. This guy was writing this book, that, you know, that, uh, that but anyway, uh, he wanted a picture of the stuff and my, so that's mm -hmm. what that was taken for. Uh, okay. i get more. Oh, okay, thank you. When I got done, I, I, I looked through it and I said, uh, I can belong to the uh, Cold War. Oh, no, you can't. I went to the, the, the VA. And I said, yes, I can. I said, make the papers out. 
There it is. Uh -huh. it, it, so I kindle after. That's about it. Ooh. Okay, the one other thing. Let me pull this thing up. Now, what are these? You, you brought these. Uh, yeah, that's a machine gun. That's a 30 caliber <coughs> machine gun. That's a light machine gun. You lay down behind it. That's the one you put only three at a time through. Uh, the, the, the gunner carried the uh, tripod, and the assistant gunner carried the gun, and three yep. ammunition carriers followed him. Okay. And this is the. That's the 30 caliber heavy light machine gun. Mm -hmm. Uh, you want to notice the uh, the uh, the date up in there, the, the, the 19... The 17, right? 1917, I think that was 1918. Mm -hmm. Then World War One guns that we were still wearing. Using, we used them all the way through okay. World War Two. Got it. Okay. We're down to about 15. Well, that's good. That's we just good. Made, we came out pretty good. <laughs> all right. Let me um, go down and get Tom.